So we will switch from paintings to stained glasses. And the next talk will be given by Marty Beltran for, from uh, Barcelona. Well, uh, thanks to accept my uh, lecture about uh, modernist enamels that forms part of my PhD on 19th century enamels in Barcelona that is directed by Trinidad Pradell. Um, well, well uh, the aim of this lecture is to present the results of our research done about late 19th century and early 20th century historical enamels. As we know as Art Nouveau, but in Catalonia is known as modernism. An enamel is a thin glass layer applied and fired at a lower temperature than the underlying glass. In the period, the glass used was a blown glass of the type soda lime, and the enamel, the enamel, it ha has a vitreous part to which colorants or pigment particles are added to give color. Uh, here, uh, here, we have the different materials that we have analyzed in the in the process of the project, and all the materials have been keenly supplied by Josep Maria Bonet Pitras, that is a, a, a stained glass workshop from Barcelona that was founded in the first years of the 20th century. Okay, uh, the materials that we have analyzed, on one hand, we have the raw materials acquired by Bonet Workshop to the Rigal and Granel and Granel workshop. That was one of the most important modernist uh, stained glasses workshops in, in, in Barcelona. With the help of the, of the Bonnet stained glass makers, we have prepared the, the enamels, the enamels, that, well, we uh, have applied the, the powder mixed with water and with a brush over a blown glass and firing at uh, 590 degrees Celsius. The replica enamels prepared were analyzed in the glassy part, the colorants, the reaction compounds, and the pigment particles. Finally, we have analyzed the fragments from historical enamels, stained glasses, stained glasses that have enamels obtained from the restoration of different buildings in Barcelona. The stained glasses were used as functional windows and they have been exposed for more than a hundred years to the weathering and solar irradiation. The degradation on the, uh, of the 19th century enamels is evident. We can see on this picture that we have the, a crackle in the, in the blue enamel. And the determination of the origin of this enhanced degradation on blue and green also was one of the most important reasons to begin this project. Uh, we have used uh, laser ablation um, inductively cobalt plasma mass spectrometry to determine the, the enamel's chemical composition. As uh, SEM, e EDS cannot detect minor elements and has particular problems determining boron, was one of the principal issues of the, of, of the method with the, this kind of materials. Um, SEM was used to determine the composition of the microcrystalline color pigment particles and FIB to polish the surface in order to, to obtain high resol resolution images of the nanoparticles. Uh, ultraviolet visible near infrared transmittance and diffuse reflectance were used also to determine color, the lab coordinates, as well as, as the absorption in the near infrared regions. Um, Microdiffraction patterns were obtained from thin sec sections of the enameled glasses at the MSPD beam line at ALBA and working at 29.2 kilo electrovolts. It's essential for determination of degradation products, reaction compounds, and pigment particles on historical enamels because the samples are small and the enamels are very thin layer 
and are lead rich we don't, uh, with a t the laboratory diffraction we don't have enough energy to to analyze with uh, the this kind of materials thin cross sections uh, below 100 micrometers thick of the samples were prepared first embedding into epoxy resin cutting with a low speed saw with a diamond disc in the 19th century, European scientists developed and produced a new formulation for enamels. In the forefront was the, the French chemist Adolphe, Adolphe Lacroix, who wrote a treatise about the, the enamels, but also other companies like Wenger's or Los Pied. We have analyzed uh, um, raw materials from the three companies, um, Lacroix, Wenger's and Los Pied. They develop a new formulation based on a lead zinc borosilicate glass with low softening temperatures and a reasonable resistance to water corrosion. In this table, we show the results from the laser ablation ICP mass spe spectroscopy on the enamels prepared from the 19th century raw materials. The composition of the vitreous part is this one, and we can see that we have a, a high amount of boron and lead. It's really rich in these two elements. And well, it is the, the most important, is the, the glassy part of the, of the enamel and, and the part that, that gives the the properties of, of resistance to the corrosion. We can see that we have almost a uh, 10% uh, uh, in weight from the lead of approximately 40-50%, uh, uh, boron is 20 more or less, with some variations, uh, uh, silica is lo really low in this case, and then saying it's it can it's ten percent more or less a, as a as an example. The the colorants we can see that the for example the purple is a purple of Cassius that is an alloy with silver and gold, co precipitated with thin that appears in modernist recipes from Lacroix and Rigal. We have the the amount of gold and silver and Antin oxide. Uh, we have also selenium red that was really new for the for the period that the pattern of the of the process was really the, the same years of the production of these materials. Uh, we have red of manganese, yellow of chrome. We have for the greens um, um, uh, cobalt, cro chrome, cobalt and chrome aluminates. And we have also copper dissolved in the in the glassy part. For the blues, for the blues ones, we have also uh, cobalt aluminate particles. As we can see in the SEM image, we have the due to the low density of the particles of cobalt aluminate, they form a layered structure of the enamel of the enamel. Okay. Then we have a, a part in the surface that is rich in cobalt aluminate particles. We have an interface that is rich in lead. And then we have the, the soda lime glass that is the base glass of the, of the enamel. Now, we will present here the results obtained for some historical enamels from several buildings in Barcelona. Here is an example we have another that we have analyzed that is that they are produced by, by the same workshop, Rigal and Granel. Uh, it's important to remark that the enamels from of the Rigal workshop were in the exterior, this, these two ones the PJ1 and the SM1, and the, the enamel, the NEN1, was indoors in a, in a building in Estación del Nord. It was made also by Maumejan Workshop, that it has a, a, worship, a workshop in Barcelona. Uh, well, we can see that the enamels that has been in the, in the exterior, 
they have the, the glassy part really depleted in boron, zinc, and lead. And is enriched in silica, sodium, and calcium. Okay? We can see that the enamels that have been in indoors, they have a, a, a proportion of the glassy part that are more or less the same that we have found in the, in the, in the samples. Analyze it. The first sample this is one, uh, PJ1, is a purple enamel with some contour grisaille over a transparent glass fragment from the Palau de Justicia. And as I say, we can observe that lead, boron, and zinc has been depleted, opposite silica, sodium, and calcium. Here we can see also the SEM images of PJ1, and we can note the presence of three layers. A1, that we can see the suspension of particles of, of gold and silver and, and tin oxide. We have here, again, the, the interface that it's enriched. Here we have the analysis with ECM, and here is we can see that it's still we have the, the color, the colorant. Here we, we can see that it's enriched, the interface enriched in lead. And here we have the, the base glass, okay? We have a soda lime glass. Here uh, we can see the ECM images of PJ1, and we can note the presence of lead sulfate. And that is a result of the lead leaching in presence of humidity and atmospheric pollution. Here we have the micro diffraction patterns of the PJ1 grisale taken near the surface and the base glass respectively. Shows the presence, we have here the surface and the glass, and shows the presence of calcium and lead sulfate results of the same process of corrosion. The grisale particles are an iron rich spinel containing manganese and copper, an iron rich lead silicate mixed with a purple enamel. The addition of, co of copper oxide reduce the amount of hematite format and gives a green hue to the glassy part. Here we have the second sample that uh, is also from the Regali Granel, and we can see again that is, uh, we have depleted in boron and zinc and lead and enriched in silica, calcium and sodium. It's from, from the district of the Sans Montjuic. And we can see here the, the, the chemical composition and the, the SEM image of the SM1 that shows the presence of, particul of particles of cobalt and chrome aluminate, that are these ones, and mel melanotechita, that is, is because that is mixed with the enamel is mixed with the grisaille. <coughs> Here we have the, the third sample, and we have a, a yellow of chrome and a um, um, copper, and we can see in the AGM images that the, the enamel is fully amorphous, and it has, is virtually unaltered, okay. Um, here we can see the, the UVB near uh, spectra of the study of enamels. And we can see that they show an enhanced absorption in the near region due to the cobalt aluminate particles. Okay. The enhanced absor absorbance of the infrared light by particles and color centers in the enamel will be responsible for the increase in the overall temperature of the enamel submitted to, sol to solar irradiation, as well as for the thermal mismatch between the pigment particles, enamel glass, and base glass. Thermal stresses will cause the formation of cracks due to the mismatch in the thermal expansion coefficients and a faster, greater deteriora deterioration of the enam enamels. Uh, to end, uh, for the conclusions, we have the, we have the historical enamels compositions have been determined, as well as the composition and colorants of the raw materials of the Regal and Granel workshop. Microdiffraction is essential to determine the pigment particles and degradation products of samples due to the thinner of the, 
of the layers, uh, the diffraction is, uh, is not enough to with, uh, with the samples historicals. With the replicas is, is enough because we have a, a big amount of the, of the enamel, but with the historical ones, not. And then ha the a study has allowed us to determine the main mechanism of alteration, Atmosme atmospheric corrosion driven by humid humidity. Uh, the enhanced deterioration showed by the blue and green enamels has to be related to the presence of cobalt aluminate particles, which are responsible for the layered microstructure in the enamel and also for the enhanced absorption in the infrared radiation, and the mixture of grisaille paints or other enamels, because the, the mixture changes the chemical composition of the glassy part of the enamels, affecting its stability. And that's all. Thank you. So uh, you showed in some tables that you had gold mm -hmm. and silver together, and you said, "Oh, it's co-precipitated with tin oxide." Yeah. Is there is there a specific indication why you say that it's a co-precipitate? Because I could also imagine that there are all kinds of nanoparticles in this glass giving the. When color. we um, put the analysis with the SEM, is. Um, in the nanoparticles, it appears that, that is uh, um, gold, silver, and, and tin oxide. And well, is, is the, the classical... There's no separation. You always see Yeah, them it seems that, that it's together. And is the, the classical um, recipe of the purple of Cassius. It, it's as, as it's, 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 it's nature. It's like it's nature. a... Okay. Yeah. One moment, I, I'm going to have to find that. OK, we have here no? the, the particles. And yes, when you are going to analyze every particle, you, you find the, the three elements. OK, yeah. Thank you. Any other question? No. Okay, so thank you okay. again, Marty. Thank you. So the last presentation of this session will be given by Elena Tereshenko, oh. who is coming from uh, Kurchatov. You can take uh, this one. Institute. And in her talk, Elena will give uh, a bit different point of view as she will show us uh, the complementarity between synchrotron techniques and neutron techniques for the analysis of artworks. Uh, good evening. It was very... Good evening. I, is it working? Uh, it was a very long day. Um, uh, so I try um, to be um, uh, very short. Uh, first of all, I would like uh, to uh, say thank you for organizing committee for inviting me. It's very pleasure for me to make a token in this um, auditorium. Um, as you see, um, I would like to uh, uh, look, um, uh, take your attention in a very interesting problem. Sometimes, and you can see it from, um, you, um, uh, we see today a lot of presentation where uh, discuss some problems with uh, imaging. Uh, and some of these problems uh, containing with um, mm, um, specific uh, interaction of synchrotron radiation uh, with um, matter. And uh, 
um, one way that we can use for solve this problem. For solving this problem, it's um, involving our study uh, another type of uh, radiation, I mean um, neutrons. And uh, and uh, mm, we use uh, infrastructure of Kurchatov Institute. It includes um, synchrotron source Kurchatov uh, and neutron uh, source um, reactor IR8. Of course, we uh, involve in our study a um, wide range of lab equipment, uh, but my presentation uh, will be concentrated only these two uh, results that we received on these two uh, mm, mega science infrastructure objects. Um, uh, of course, the advantages of synchrotron neutrons is a different contrast for hard and light elements. Uh, it allows us to separate uh, metal base Mm, for example, and uh, um, see some uh, corrosion or some organic uh, component in our artifacts. Uh, very significant factor, different value of penetration depths uh, for these two type of uh, radiation. Um, not exactly radiation, uh, with uh, synchrotron radiation and neutrons. And, uh, mm, uh, Basic experimental techniques uh, that I will show today. It will be imaging and um, uh, elemental and phase analysis. And the main issues of our study is uh, inner construction or uh, outer appear, uh, appearance of our um, uh, objects of cultural heritage. To, for reconstruction of the technologies of their production and uh, the estimation of their preservation state. Um, I have only 15 minutes, so I will show only a few examples of uh, our research. Uh, it's some uh, metal items uh, of medieval period from State Historical Museum collection and uh, um, some artifacts from the uh, excavations of Institute of Archaeology, Russian Academy of Science. Uh, first of all, metal artifacts <laughs> from uh, medieval burial mound, uh, Chorna Magila or Black Grave. Uh, what is uh, that um, monument? This uh, the biggest uh, Bureau Mount um, on the territory of Old Rus, um, dating uh, 10th century. And uh, this period is very interesting for us because it's a time of the changes for, uh, of the creation of a new statehood on the territory of uh, uh, Old Rus. Um, this uh, Bureau Mount uh, was cremation and it uh, reaches uh, Bureau Mount. Uh, you, as you can see, a lot of items, uh, weapons, coins, uh, some artifacts um, uh, with ritual ap application uh, was found. Um, and uh, at the uh, beginning of 20th century, all of this collection uh, was uh, present uh, to histori uh, historical museum and uh, um, keep there more than 100 years. Uh, oh, sorry, <coughs> the wrong side. Yes, uh, we uh, use uh, the main uh, our results was imaging, and we use two mode. First of all, it's uh, interscopy uh, when we uh, make some individual um, projection uh, at the um, certain position of the sample, and uh, um, some um, uh, if. The um, condition, if the state of our um, artifacts 
uh, allows us we uh, make uh, tomography. Uh, first of all, a row head. Oh, sorry. Um, mm. As you see, it's um, mm, sorry. Uh, this uh, small object, uh, why it's interesting? On the first stage, uh, um, uh, the re uh, restoration of historical museum found the traces of the uh, decoration, and uh, as uh, we see from synchrotron tomography, it's uh, floral decoration. Um, mm. And what uh, was uh, what useful information we receive from the comparison and uh, um, complex uh, using of neutron and synchrotron? As you see here, we see different contrast in the uh, during the tom uh, tomographic slices. Um, um, from the elemental analysis, uh, we know that. Uh, all these uh, metal base containing uh, iron, but the diffraction shows us that uh, we don't have clear iron. We have uh, some oxidation and um, hydroxidation uh, of iron. And uh, uh, compare uh, what we can see. This contrast layer, it's oxide film, and uh, due to the f this film, we can uh, study this object and this object uh, we can take in hand because it's stable um, uh, uh, compound, uh, it's thick layer and uh, it's uh, this uh, <laughs> uh, layer of oxidation uh, safe for us this uh, artifact. And what we can see in uh, a neutron, we see another layer with contrast and uh, we understand that this is uh, traces of the corrosion of the metal base. Um, and uh, as you see, this um, oxidation film um, keep the grooves used for inlay for, uh, during the decoration. And uh, trussology analysis shows us that uh, this was uh, specifically uh, primary prepare uh, grooves before inlay. And only after that, uh, inlay uh, in, uh, in the form of uh, kappa or kappa alloy wire was uh, introduced inside this arrow. Uh, this is a uh, reconstruction uh, of uh, view, this artifact. And um, the other artifact from the same place was the spearhead. Uh, the main interesting part of this spearhead, it's um, uh, the uh, sleeve which, uh, containing uh, some decoration. Um, the form of this decoration, it's rhombs and uh, triangles. Uh, decoration was made uh, um, of wire, kappa or kappa alloy, with um, thickness of uh, uh, 300 uh, of micrometer. And uh, when we uh, study, uh, when we see another um, slice of this decoration, we see some windings, as you see, so uh, wire was winding. And here you can see the traces of uh, um, cleat that was used for fixing uh, the spearhead on the spear shaft. And the reconstruction of this decoration can, uh, can be like that. Uh, Another task uh, where um, combination of neutron and uh, synchrotron uh, study uh, will be very useful for us, it's SWOT fragment. Um, and we, a combin uh, combination of this information allows us to see uh, the part of inspiration on the blade of this fragment. 
And here you see that partially it was clear, um, uh, clarifying by a restorator, <coughs> but here uh, we didn't see any traces of that uh, thing. And uh, th now we <laughs> have another question. Could we find the um, second part of this sword? And could we recognize the um, inside this uh, mixture a lot of components, uh, the inspiration, uh, other letters of inspiration? Um, <coughs> Unfortunately, I'm <laughs> not too fast, but uh, the another interesting objects, it's uh, artifacts with a known application. And uh, first of all, uh, it was, it suggests like a uh, part of spearhead, but after the clearing, we see some uh, feston edge without any sharpening, so it couldn't be a weapon. And uh, elemental analysis shows us that it, this is iron metal base and uh, bright drops, it's uh, silver. And uh, after the study of uh, the first big part of knife, we see the same uh, first on edge, uh, we see clear blade, and we didn't find any uh, thinking or um, sharpening of the lay, so it's not a weapon. Uh, on the handle we see the uh, beads and cl uh, cleaning of this object um, uh, really um, show that. Uh, on this uh, unknown uh, <laughs> applications um, subject, we see some special cover plates. And our studies show that it was interior um, <coughs> interviewer's repair because, uh, as you see, here was um, gap and these plates cover that, pla uh, that gap. So it was very estimated uh, object. <coughs> And uh, then we see here some Scandinavian decor, and as you see here, logical end, some traces of breaking. And uh, absolutely another subject uh, show us uh, that we have a lot of cracks, so we cannot clear that subject. But and we see the same type of the uh, uh, decoration with another logical end. Uh, the another interesting information uh, that here we see some uh, traces of diffraction uh, during neutron uh, tomography. We see, uh, uh, here you see some blinking. It's uh, traces of diffraction and comparison of uh, neutron diffraction from these two um, areas um, show us that we have some crystals of alpha iron inside. Uh, so what about reconstruction of this object? We see uh, interesting uh, configuration. We see a very close si uh, size of the fistoon and we have um, asymmetrical elements and we can suggest and our colleagues uh, uh, from historical museums agree with us that it could be possible that we here we have some lost part uh, with um, equal one uh, um, elements and uh, the style of this uh, reconstructing ornaments is uh, uh, close uh, the Mamen style, which uh, has uh, date, uh, dating uh, um, at the end of 10th century. Uh, but what about handle? And here we can compare these two objects and we see the same form, but here we have handle. So we produced that type of reconstruction. Uh, we suggest, uh, our colleagues um, from Historical Museum uh, now um, dis uh, have uh, um, very intensive discussion with uh, specialists from uh, uh, 10th century, for from medieval period. And uh, the first and main um, um, hypothesis that this is uh, sculpture, so it's uh, symbols of power. 
another objects uh, uh, metal and ceramics artifacts from uh, Institute of Archaeology. I <laughs> should finish my presentation, so I will be very fast. First of all, it's um, a ceramic head, and some uh, uh, the most interesting results that um, we have two uh, variants. It's uh, the serial uh, production, which uh, producing by pressing, or this uh, the individual um, item, and we uh, see some traces of uh, sculpture working. Uh, here you can see that it's not only one. Uh, here to two layers of um, adding uh, these uh, sculptures. So it, uh, we suggest uh, that. This head uh, uh, um, is individual object with um, like state of art. Um, very interesting object. Uh, now we are studied. It's an um, icon with animal decoration. And the main question: How it could be? We have only big uh, in big part uh, uh, metal walls, but we haven't walls here inside this plate and uh, mm, for mm, eliminated uh, the situation of uh, uh, some of to, to um, some in uh, two pictures the uh, synchrotron tomography was made at the grazing incidence uh, <coughs> scheme and what we can see uh, this is the slice on the depth of uh, 115 micrometer and uh, we see that we have its neutron results. We have some vertical uh, lines, and we suppose that it could be uh, walls. No, it's not walls. It grooves with some uh, soil or something uh, like clay um, filling. Uh, but in one, uh, we have two. Uh, big and a little bit uh, smaller, but the traces of the uh, walls, here you can see it's uh, hidden walls, uh, and they have another position than we see now in the colored uh, plate. And um, perhaps, perhaps it, uh, uh, it is evident of two stage of fabrication. Why uh, the master used two stage, we don't know. And we try to study that. Uh, uh, so our studies of these objects are under progress. Uh, and uh, um, some uh, interesting uh, information we receive when we study uh, 3D um, uh, f models of these uh, small parts of uh, walls, we see here traces of the broken. So perhaps it w could be that uh, master removed these uh, walls specially. And, uh, a very bright, <laughs> one means very bright results uh, we receive for cross reliquary, or if we use old uh, name of this uh, crosses and uh, copions. Uh, they have two leaves and uh, a small free space for reliquium. Uh, and uh, what's the question? Most of them found in close uh, condition. And uh, you have two uh, variants. You don't touch it, or you uh, broken it to see what is in inside. And we create a pro sorry, we create the protocol where we compare um, synchrotron and neutron tomography, and um, detailed study some details of construction. And if we see that this in that um, uh, sample, you see that in, uh, crosses is broken, so we have the places for um, soils, for clay. Uh, but if we uh, have uh, um, unbroken crosses, uh, we can conclude that 
it will be good to, to open it and to study what is the uh, in, uh, inside of this process. And now our protocol is uh, used uh, for um, um, current funds during the excavation. And of course, uh, we have a lot of collective and uh, a lot of uh, researchers uh, which involved in this study. And <laughs> thank you for your attention, sorry. <laughs> so, If nobody no. wants, uh, maybe I have one most from, from an organizational point of view. When you combine neutron with synchrotron, do you manage to have beam time, let's say, in consecutive days, or do you have to bring the, the object? Uh, not times. exactly consecutive because uh, on uh, uh, first of all it will be better to make a synchrotron radiation study because after that uh, our um, objects uh, could be uh, moved to um, uh, to neutrons because after the neutron study we have to keep it in uh, special places uh, uh, one week or months it depends on the so uh, size and uh, uh, the um, uh, composition of these uh, objects. So, of course, we, uh, mm, uh, we connect this uh, type of studies. We, uh, make, um, we have some application uh, or proposal for this study and we, uh, because if we have these objects, uh, sometimes it could be once per year. So we have to study all that we can. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay, if there is no other question. A little bit tight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>